What's up guys, how are you doing? I'm Paul. I'm Morgan. Mm. In today's video, we got a pastor. He is talking to his congregation and things get wild. It involves his disappointment in them. It involves an expensive watch. We're about to get into all of it. No, it really is. It's, it's a story going viral. I've already seen a few YouTube channels, two off the top of my head that have posted about it today. Someone sent it to me and I was like looking at it just as you guys, I'm sure like, whoa, what is happening here? What is happening? So we're about to get into it. Yeah, Paul played me the video and I was like, what? I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, for real though. <laughs> but there's some there's some good takeaways, I think. Yes. So before we get into that, make sure you subscribe if you're new here. And even if you're not new here and you haven't subscribed, subscribe. What are you waiting for? Come on, guys. We're giving commentary on culture, social issues, and faith to help you be in the world of the word of God. We've got our new merch here. If you guys have not gotten any, it is now one and a half weeks until this merch is halted. Gone. So yeah, merch line 2.0 says right here, Paul and Morgan, if you can see it, it's stitched in, it's embroidered, yeah. which is why I'm calling this merch launch 2.0 because yeah. it's embroidered and yeah. you have uh, different colors on here. Just get yourself some. Get yourself the, the crew neck or the short sleeve and it's free shipping for our patrons because we love and appreciate you guys and we're really grateful for the way you support us. All right, oh yeah, and the link is below for these. Seriously, get you some. Morgan, <laughs> let's dive right into it. So we got this pastor coming out of Kansas City, Missouri, I believe. Yep. Not sure the name off the top of my head, but um, I think before we discuss any further, let's just play the clip. It's about a minute long. Um, and you guys are going to get an idea for yourselves how this all went down. Let's go. You're still poor, broke, busted, and disgusted because of how you've been honoring me. I'm not worth your McDonald's money. Come on. Come on. I'm not worth your Red Lobster money. I ain't worth your St. John Nick. Y'all can't afford it, no how. I ain't worth y'all Louis Vuitton. Come on. I ain't worth your Prada. Come on. I'm not worth your Gucci. Come on, man. You can buy a Movado watch in Sam's. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. And y'all know I asked for one last year. Here it is the whole way in August. I still ain't got it. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Let me kick down the door and talk to my cheap sons and daughters. I don't want to hear no more excuses about what y'all can't afford. You can't afford it because you don't see the value here. Y'all hear from y'all pastor and father, I'm over y'all. I'm over your cheap expression. I am shook. <laughs> so right out of the gate, you guys, he did come out with an apology that we're going to play a little bit of here in a moment. Yeah. But let's just go ahead and put this out on the table. Okay. We know... This day and age, you can take a 30 second, a minute long clip out of an hour long clip. Hour long sermon. Yeah, whatever it is, and run with it and miss the full context. Sure. So it's going to be really up to you guys and us, whatever. Um, does this need more context or does it just not matter at all what the other context or what the mm -hmm. sermon was about? Like what he's saying here is plenty enough to be like, this well, is mess up. <laughs> yeah, but, but I mean, in his apology and we're, you know, as far as context goes, he, he mentions that briefly, like the context issue, mm -hmm. but he never goes and this is just his words. Like he never backtracks and says, oh, this clip has been misconstrued i was actually talking about our relationship with god and how we should be given god our uh you know our best in our finances Prada. the first of our finances he doesn't <laughs> therefore you know you got to take we saw the clip there so let's morgan as i was thinking about this topic just to kind of kick things off yeah the the sad uh, i think someone you know yeah recorded this from their congregation or whatever it was posted on tiktok it went viral on tiktok now there's you know all these media uh whatever stories on it really just laying into the guy and rightfully so and that that's a tough 
thing about this is it puts the Christian church in a public spotlight for the world to see <laughs> in a very bad light. Yeah, isn't that the story? It's <laughs> and it, it's a it's a difficult thing. It's a sobering thing. But what I wanted to touch on is us, you guys kind of know our story, transitioning out of what we would consider the hyper charismatic movement, which we were in for a little while, a, a decent chunk of time. Mm-hmm. There's this concept that I think is more prominent, I'm, I'm confident is more prominent in the hyper charismatic, which is your pastor is the shiznip. Your pastor <laughs> is the closest thing to God around. And oftentimes in the charismatic, you see charismatic pastors that are very persuasive, that are very filled with the Holy Ghost and the fire, that are very uh, confident. And I could see how though people from that camp, it could be more easy to be manipulated. And you got then like the whole prosperity movement, if you will. Yeah. You know what I mean? So you heard this guy at the very beginning talking about honor. Kind of like, you're not honoring me. Mm-hmm. You guys are being cheap. And I've been wanting this watch is what it sounded like. And it's he mentioned the name of the watch and it's it's an expensive watch. It's like $1,100 at Sam's Club. <laughs> I'm sure there's different... Why does Sam's Club have an $1,100 watch is my question. <laughs> it's an expensive brand of watch. We'll yeah. say it's around 1000 bucks or whatever. There's, But so it's like he's... And then he, he brings up the honor. Yes, the Bible calls us to honor those that are doing the Lord's work. Mm-hmm. Do not muzzle an ox while it treads the grain. Mm-hmm. But it's like this just is so clear to anyone watching... Mm-hmm. That if he's getting on his congregation for not being generous so that he can get an expensive watch, that's abuse. Oh, absolutely. It's disgusting, in my opinion. But haven't you seen this kind of demonstrated in the hyper charismatic, some hyper charismatic circles? Just in, yeah. I, prosperity I, circles? Yeah, in prosperity circles. This idea that, like, the pastor is this, like, Demigod? God, Demi- yeah. We call him a demigod in the words of Rick Roryden. <laughs> and he is to be lavish, like gifts lavished upon him. You lay down your finances in any way, shape, or form that you can to provide for him. You go drop off meals at his doorstep. You wash his car. You do what you need to do to make sure he knows you are incredibly grateful for his mighty mighty work in the church and to me that's just like disgusting and not jesus at all like to any pastor out there living a life like that you should be ashamed of yourself in my opinion um that you don't look like jesus at all if the church (laughs) notices the work you're doing for the flock and voluntarily says we no. want to bless you. We want to bless you in this way. We want to t- let us come in and take care of your kids while you guys go out on a date. Yeah. We want to buy you a meal. Like all that stuff is good. But when you're kind of demanding it and shaming people from the pulpit is what it looked like for yeah. not getting him a superficial thing. That's that's where it just slaps us in the face. Well, and him too saying like, this is why y'all are still broke. And you see and that a lot. You, you hear that with the tithe. It's because you're not giving enough to me and god's not gonna bless you until you start blessing me which is where the heck is that in the bible where is that in scripture again that's where i was trying to like almost give him the benefit of the doubt of maybe he's referring to god and our not our our keeping our worldly possessions to ourselves instead of being generous towards god but doesn't seem like that's the case, and he did not say that in his apology. Yeah. Which is what I would have, if I'm making that apology video, I would have been the first to say, you know, maybe I could have watched my tone, but just so you guys know, this was talking about the church in relation to God and our finances and how we use our finances to glorify God. Yeah. He didn't say any of that in his apology. So, Morgan, um, <sighs> Actually, it was Ray Comfort in his video on this topic that said a quote that I thought just embodied it so well. And now we're about to turn from getting on the pastor to getting on the congregation. Ray said, the only reason prosperity preachers prosper 
is because naive congregations don't read their Bibles. And I'm not trying to throw any church congregation under the bus, but I do think of perhaps Joel Osteen's congregation. And you hear them just going crazy when he's talking about the worldly wealth and worldly blessing and you're, you know, you're so awesome and you're going to get more and they're just going crazy. And then you see even that clip, it looked like they were getting really into it saying, come on, pastor. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, why are you guys clapping at this? He is shaming y'all. <laughs> and I think of other, pa other churches and other perhaps prosperity movements and you look at the congregations and they're so into it. But are you guys, do you guys know what the Word of God says? Are you studying the Word of God for yourselves? If you were, you probably would be distancing yourself from these type of, of messages. Yeah, that's why it's just so important. Yeah, I mean, like, prosperity preachers end up prosperous because they've found people who are going to buy into this nonsense that they're preaching and teaching, and they're not in the Word of God seeing, like, oh, no, this is not scripture, scripturally accurate. And so we have got to be very careful. And sadly, a lot of these preachers, I feel like, are using scripture, but Pulling totally a scripture out of here, context. here, grabbing a scripture there. And so it's like, you can be like, no, my pastor uses Bible verses all the time. Okay, but is he using them accurately? Is he actually, yeah. like, you know, whatever. And so we have to be really cautious of that as well and be careful that you don't fall into that trap of believing and reading and looking at the Bible through the eyes of your pastor. Do you remember, Morgan, the tweet that I shared on my Instagram? And guys, just for the record, like, we're not sitting here, oh, this pastor said this, this prosperity. It's not like every other video is on Joel Osteen or Kenneth Copeland. Mm -hmm. There's a point when it's just like, all right, congregations of these people, you're on your own. You know, you're going to have to give an account before God of who you cho chose to listen to, the types of theology you chose to embrace, whether or not you're actually reading the Bible for yourselves to know a biblical theology. Mm -hmm. But I did share uh, a tweet by Kenneth Copeland recently. Oh. <laughs> Do you remember what that said? Oh, man. What was that? I can go back. I mean, but ultimately it was, it had to do something about the more you uh, so yeah i had to do so much with this topic yeah yeah dangerous i'll see dangerous. if i can find it but while i'm looking for it um i'll find it while we're playing his apology video but yeah it does hurt the reputation of the church with outsiders and i i feel like that's become such like a an easy thing for christians to say mm -hmm. to the point where like oh Oh, you guys, it's it's reasons like, it's people like you that have made people leave the church. You're the reason, blah, blah, And that can be taken too far. Right. Like we need it. We're all, again, you know, we're all going to have to give an account for ourselves. And you can't use people mm -hmm. as a reason for, oh, now I'm not a Christian because people did this. People hurt me. Yeah. No, that's between you and God. Mm -hmm. But yeah, people are still, the Bible says that teachers are going to be held to a higher standard. Not many of you should be teachers my dear brothers, because you know that we who teach will be judged more strictly. That's in James. It's talking about the words that you say. Um, teachers are held to a higher standard. Yeah. But yeah, Morgan, I'll find the Kenneth Copeland tweet that I posted while you start playing his apology. And just in this guy's defense, and maybe this is me just giving, I, I really like to give people the benefit of the doubt. It's true. He does. I thought it was a pretty good <laughs> apology. <laughs> But you okay. guys can decide, you know, <laughs> decide where you're at play. This is just like about half of his apology video. Okay. No context could erase the words I used. I apologize to all who have been hurt, angered, or in any way damaged by my words. The zeal of any presentation must be tempered with love and respect. And that was not displayed. I apologize to the church at large for any undue scrutiny I have subjected you to. I apologize to every preacher and pastor who must stand up under the controversy that I have caused. To those who know and love me, thank you for your support. To those who now know me because of this video clip, I regret that your first impression of me is one of anger, hate, and resentment. 
My actions and my words are inexcusable. I offer no justification or defense. That moment was mishandled and mismanaged. I deeply regret this moment and I solicit your prayers and your forgiveness as we grow forward. I like the background music. I don't know if that was like actually there or what, but I have what, a feeling it was. What are your all's thoughts on on the apology, Morgan? What was your thoughts? And I found the Kenneth Copeland tweet. Or let me just read the Kenneth, Kenneth Copeland. Kenneth said in a tweet on August sixth, the and he's quoting himself, I guess, from a sermon recently. Maybe he says, "The more you gain financially, the more you're a threat to the devil." Oh, Kenneth Copeland. Boy. Things like that are what are, and then when it's just emphasized over and over and over again, gaining financially, worldly wealth and blah, 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 it, there you go. You know, you start cheering for stuff like this. Yeah, that's ridiculous. (laughs) But anyway, thoughts on the apology, Morgan? (sighs) You know, if someone is going to apologize, a brother, sister in Christ, whoever, like I do believe we're called to accept their apology that doesn't necessarily mean we have to forget what they've done or like just you know i I don't know yeah yeah. um so i i I, who am i to be like oh that wasn't a sincere apology i'm not gonna say if it was or wasn't i have no idea i hope and pray that it was a genuine sincere apology and that he learns from this i like how he acknowledged you know i'm i'm sorry to the the broader church yes yeah. the, the kind of publicity behind this episode that is going to hurt the reputation for yeah i'm for glad people. he acknowledged that as well he acknowledged some good stuff this is definitely have has become bigger than just him like he is hopefully realizing and seems to have realized that like I have a reputation to uphold God's name and his word and who Jesus is. And I just did a trash job of doing that. It does. You do (laughs) tend to normally when something like this surfaces, it wasn't the first time that it happened. Right. My, I have no clue who this guy is. He's a pastor out of Kansas City, Missouri. But normally you have, oh, he said this he really emphasizes this on the reg he said this the sunday prior and the sunday prior to that but we don't know for sure that just tends to be the case i would say right yeah seem like a genuine apology um he seems like he sees the error of his ways but really how you're going to be able to test it is in months to come is he preaching the word of god is he emphasizing the core tenets of the christian faith or is he getting off on these weird health wealth prosperity gospel tangents and if that be the case if he's doing that on the reg which there are a a good number of pastors who are i would say to the people that are loving them and eating it up again you're going to stand before god and give account be in the word and you probably will end up distancing yourself to a more solid bible believing church yeah but you guys comment below let us know your thoughts on this particular episode what are your takeaways from it what are your takeaways and keep the conversation going if the pastor you know who knows but i wouldn't be surprised if he was kind of watching all this <laughs> stuff now turn into a firestorm if you end up watching this and here who are we you know all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of god the people that are going after you like crazy they're sinners you know but you are a preacher of the word it you're a preacher of the word you're going to be held accountable and held to a higher standard. So repent and get yourself right and maybe take a break from preaching if you feel like that needs to happen. Yes. And stop demanding gifts from your congregation. Thank you. All right. (laughs) Yes. Catch you again very soon. Love you all. Have hope. Get yourself some merch. Link below. But we're not going (laughs) to, we're not going to shame you if you don't. But seriously, love you guys. We'll catch you again very soon. Have hope. And be free. If you're in the live chat, we'll be right back.
Hey guys, as you may have noticed, we get very few brand deals, which is why our patrons, the names you see here, are so important. You guys really are the lifeblood of this ministry. We could not do this without you all. If you believe in this content and you want to partner with us on Patreon, click the link below or just go to patreon.com slash Show.